Traveling salesman problem is famously computationally expensive. That means it's simply slow to solve in most cases. Uh, but how do we make it fast? If you want to learn the basics of traveling salesman problem and some basic implementation, please uh, click on the description. There's a link uh, to one of my videos explaining just that. In this video, however, we'll try to make something more fancy solving PSP with Julia's jump, but faster. The basic idea is still pretty much the same. I want to solve PSP, but without coding the bespoke algorithm myself and leveraging powerful solvers. I want to express my problem in a high level DSL, such as jump, and I want to do it with Julia, just because I enjoy working in Julia. In my previous video, I implemented miller tucker Zemlin formulation for mixed integer programming a solution to traveling salesman problem, which achieves just that. It leverages the power of uh, industry standard solvers, such as GLPK, Cplex, I, or a few others that I tried out. And indeed, it was a very concise formulation with just, uh, uh, just a few lines, very similar to the one that you see in front of yourself, um, it had only one problem. Uh, even though it was simple and it was leveraging those powerful high performance solvers, it was still very slow. So what is slow in context of traveling salesman problem? In my previous video, I, I showed the benchmark of uh, four different solvers on a basic uh, MIP formulation of miller tucker Zemlin. And the best of them, Cplex, uh, for a really small problem of uh, just 10 nodes, uh, was uh, consistently reaching around 7 milliseconds and was reaching optimality each time. Uh, that sounds like very fast, right? The only problem is that for a problem that's three times bigger, 30 nodes, we're already talking about 400 milliseconds. That's just so much slower and what is worse is that you just try to get a little bit more 31 32 35 and very often during the benchmark execution which uh, repeatedly calls the same code with different input data uh, you never reach uh, optimal solution or it takes many seconds we are talking about hundreds of seconds this is of course uh, not the fault of solvers themselves, it is the fault of the formulation. And this is what we'll improve in this video. So what is wrong with miller tucker Zemlin formulation? And why is it so slow? Uh, from my previous video, uh, you may know that uh, the basics of uh, miller tucker Zemlin are about formulating constraints that exclude uh, incorrect solutions. Uh, basic things like preventing traveling uh, to itself that would be pretty lame traveling salesman if you just continued traveling to the same city uh, and also ensuring that each node is fitted uh, exactly once and so forth but one uh, constraint is very important for Minotaki Zemlin and also for correct formulation it is about eliminating sub tours a sub tour is uh, specified here. It looks a bit convoluted, so I will use a visualization to explain what a subter elimination constraint is about. Imagine we have a trivial traveling salesman problem with four nodes, so in classic parlance, four cities to visit. Uh, and let's say they are equidistant to each other. We start over here, and let's say we pick this one we are here, then we travel to the third one, finally from the third one to the fourth one, and then we come back and then we finish TSP. This is correct formulation. Um, but there are many other possibilities. Let's say, what if I, after traveling to the second one, I travel back? Is this forbidden? In Miller Tucker Zemlin, it is indeed forbidden. Uh, and this is what guides the solver in finding uh, the right solutions. Um, 
This is of course not a correct uh, solution to TSP and excluding such solutions called SAP tours uh, is crucial. Miller Tucker Zemlin uh, anticipates all possibilities of such SAP tours before you even start optimizing uh, and pro prohibits them by enforcing the order in which uh, you, you visit, uh, visit the nodes. But this is very expensive because the bigger your problem, uh, the more such constraints you have to add. In short, a uh, number of, uh, of, uh, of, of constraints in your problem explodes with a uh, number of, uh, of nodes. And the more constraints you have, more time it takes uh, to solve mixed integer programming problem. Can we prevent sub tours without destroying performance? Uh, there are more approaches of doing that. The one that I'll propose is not even the fastest, but it is already radically faster than naive uh, Miller Tucker Zemlin. How does that work? So we already know that uh, adding all uh, constraints preventing all possible sub tours uh, initially, like with uh, Miller Tucker Zemlin. Well, it is, there's some subtle differences, like it actually enforces the order of the nodes, but it still explodes number of constraints as it is uh, strictly dependent on number of nodes. This destroys performance, so we cannot do that. But how about we have a first initial solution with only the basic constraints, such as do not travel to yourself and ensure uh, each node is visited exactly once. And then just see, let's see if it contains subtors. If at an off chance that it immediately doesn't contain subtors, uh, we are happy, we are done. And uh, this is gonna be really fast, of course. Uh, but world is not uh, such a pleasant place, especially for uh, bigger problems, like with 50 nodes or higher. There's a very high chance that uh, that solution will contain multiple subtors, in fact. So what do we do then? Uh, in such case, uh, we're going to be a bit lazy. We're going to add constraints after the solution. So if I first give me the first proposal, check what is incorrect, and then ban the incorrect state explicitly, but only this state, and then try to optimize again. And this loop uh, of uh, refining the model by adding new constraints is called uh, uh, iterative optimization. And it is very simple to implement. Code for my iterative optimization solu solution in Julia's jump uh, is in the description on my GitHub. Uh, let's have a look at that. The function itself is still quite concise. Um, it's no longer as simple as the naive MTZ as you saw in my previous video, because we have to define some more functions. It's no longer self-contained, uh, but it's still manageable. Uh, the body of it remains the same. We still have to ensure some basic constraints, such as not traveling to oneself and ensuring that uh, each node is visited exactly once. Uh, so that in the constraint department, we are uh, somewhat lighter already because we don't have the order constraint, uh, the big one, the one that destroys performance anymore. But we have something new, and this is this while loop. This is the iterative part of the solution, as we have to check whether the solution contains subtors, uh, and then uh, we have to add the constraints. One thing that's maybe not so as, as transparent in this solution is that the constraint is actually added inside the has subtour. So what subtour does uh, is, well, checks what is the shortest uh, subtour in the solution, uh, gets the nodes that are responsible for it, the ones which, which actually form it, and then creates a constraint that simply prevents setting all of those nodes to one. I, if you're a bit confused about this part, I recommend rewatching uh, my video about MTZ and how uh, the, the decision variable looks like and why is it actually one that specifies visited node. So how fast is the iterative implementation? Uh, as you remember, the, the biggest problem I could solve with the naive MTZ uh, and the fastest solver was just 30 nodes. Uh, and what was also important was the consistency. Can you do it uh, in a comparable reach optimality, comparable time 
time after time because for benchmarks we have to call it repeatedly many times and just one failure will break the benchmark uh, with the new solution uh, we can uh, run problems of uh, size 30 and as you will see uh, soon also much bigger consistently reaching significantly faster uh, convergence so with GLPK which is not even uh, as fast as uh, C, uh, Cplex by default uh, we're reaching optimality within 157 uh, milliseconds uh, median time uh, for Cplex, uh, in the previous MTZ, it was inconsistent 400 milliseconds. So that's a, that's a huge benefit, but it doesn't end here uh, because we can go much higher. We can go 50 and possibly if I wanted to, I could uh, squeeze out a bit more. I just didn't have time. Uh, with 50 nodes in a problem, uh, we can do two seconds median and all of that consistently consistently without failing to reach optimality with Gurobi which is a uh, proprietary uh, non-open source sol uh, no solver uh, for which I got a free license thank you Gurobi uh, to run this benchmark we got comparable results also around two seconds with Higgs which is a high performance optimizer we got open source one uh, we got six seconds on median and ego which is a uh, meant for global optimization. I still have to figure out it's a strong point. It's uh, also close to six seconds. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to check out the, the links in the description and subscribe for more content like that.